and gentlemen, welcome. I'm actually at the Jamaica Diaspora Conference in the UK at Brunel University, and I've got with me Mr. The Honourable Arlanda Terrellong, MP, Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade with portfolio responsibility for the diaspora, which is very crucial and very important. Minister, one of the things that, depending on who you listen to at times, one would say that Jamaica gone to the dogs. But speaking to different persons, there's this imbalance where it needs to be harmonized. What is happening or how can we dispel that? Yes. yes. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. And yes. to quote a former Prime Minister of Jamaica, yes. you, know, you know, we need to mash down that lie. <laughs> And, you know, the truth is that I want persons to understand that mm. so much prosperity has happened in Jamaica. In fact, so much growth, so mm. much progress, so much prosperity has happened in Jamaica under the present administration mm. of the Jamaica Labour Party um, over the last seven years. When you look at the growth indices, you know, Jamaica has moved from a country that had, um, you know, like poor ratings yes. to now really positive outlook ratings. If you look mm. at the global rating agency, Fitch, yeah. Fitch has consistently rated Jamaica a B plus, even mm. post COVID mm. recovery, you know, so the economy continues to do well. Yes. You know, you have Forbes magazine, you have the um, IMF, you have the World Bank, who are all saying, you know, Jamaica's economic model post COVID yes. recovery yes. is yes. one of the best economic models in the world. Mm. You know, Jamaica has for the first time enjoyed a low unemployment rate. Yes. Unemployment rate in Jamaica is <coughs> now 6 yeah. Just yeah. a little over six percent. Mm. Again, that is truly historic. When you look at the the rate of unemployment, um, mm. it, it, the period 2013, 2015, yes. you know, you're looking at unemployment rate of you know between um, 18 percent, 25 percent, and now you're down to single digit six percent. The government has put in programs to ensure the growth and development of mm. the economy. And I want persons to understand that when you think of Jamaica, you know, Jamaica is not just an island of sun and fun and sand and sea, mm. I want you to picture Jamaica as a land of investment, a land of great business mm. opportunity, a land where you can acquire and achieve great wealth and return on mm. your investments. So I'm saying to members in the diaspora, invest in Jamaica. The real estate market, for mm. example, you can maxi maximize your returns, you know, greater than in excess of 100 and 200 yeah. percent. It's a market that's growing. And even in terms of buying homes in Jamaica, well, if, if you're in London, you'd probably spend maybe 1.5 million pounds for maybe a one bedroom or, 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 or a two bedroom flat, depending on location and depending size. Depending on location. Right, yes. depending on location yes, and yes. size. You know, but in Jamaica, I mean, imagine spending 800,000 pounds for a, per, a palatial residence. Yes. by the beach overlooking you're talking mm. about th that's when you can enjoy sun and sea you know but um, even the stock market the Jamaica stock market has been rated one of the best stock markets in the world 2015 2018 and onwards mm. so Jamaica is open for business yes. and so much is going on you know and um, so I want to commend yes the government for the work that we continue to do in that regard yeah Th that is powerful um, but, but somebody else would say at the same time so how are you um, dealing with the crime aspect as well because mm -hmm. I, I see some positive thing which are happening with crime mm -hmm. and um, some negatives as well and that is something to strike the balance how do you say about that well again the government has yeah. spent billions of dollars in investments yes. you're talking about investments in the jdf you know i mean ships and yes. speedboats to protect our borders yes. to limit or restrict the inflow of guns into the yes. island you're talking about outfitting police stations yes. you're talking about building new police stations mm. you're talking about body cameras for police officers you're talking about more than 850 cameras across yes. our highways and yes. byways as a part of the plan secure jamaica yeah. so that's a part of the jamaica eye program mm. with an additional 350 more cameras to yeah. be installed you know with a with, with a sort of monitoring house to be built in santa yeah. cruz st elizabeth the cameras don't so much there's been much investment mm. in reducing crime Crimes. And just to know that the year to date crime figures has shown a reduction in murder yeah. and serious crimes yeah. by some 18.8%. Yeah. So investments are being made yes. and progress is being made. So what we're actually picking up here at the same time is the perception sometimes can be seen to be stronger than fact. Mm -hmm. But we need to actually dispel these perceptions by pushing up more facts. 
communication is very really crucial, isn't it? Communication. Getting the message out like this, like this moment go. now. Yes. Yes. Communication yes. is really crucial. And again, mm -hmm. you know, we want to reassure the diaspora that, you know, Jamaica is open for business. Jamaica is safe for you to return home, for you to do business. Yes. And that the government continues to seek your input, mm -hmm. you know, because again, it's that, um, it's, it's, you are our partners. Yes. It's that sort yes. of... It's a sort of partnership where we yes. value your opinion towards yes. national development, including the opinion of our diaspora youth as well. You know, and a big part of my role, you know, being minister with direct portfolio responsibility for diaspora, is also to engage diaspora youth, helping them yeah. to make that sort of networks and connections yeah. in Jamaica, you know, to come back also, mm. you know, with the sort of skills and yes. expertise as well. Because also when you mentioned the youth a while ago, because you got the Jamaica inspired here, it is the fact that the Windrush generation, they are moving on in a way. Sorry, those who came on Windrush are moving on. The Windrush generation still is around, but the youths now, we have got to definitely engage them that yeah. they can see Definitely. Jamaica as yes. a part of them as well. Yes. And not it's not in a cut off, you have in a pato. No, they are, listen, they are Jamaican and, yes. and, and, and you know what? You're entitled to Jamaican citizenship. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. once you can show that your your, your parents, your grandparents, your mm. great grandparents that they're Jamaicans, you know, you can sort out your citizen certificate yes. at their consular offices at the British High Commission and going on to get in your Jamaican passport. And um, you know, on, on a separate note, yeah. you know, I must say that even last night at the High Commission, we engaged about 50 young leaders mm. you know below 40 and a big part of that was just to give them that opportunity to network I'm, I'm amongst 40, themselves you weren't there <laughs> you're, 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 you're on next year's guest list <laughs> you know but so we have started that process of engagement yeah, yeah. with our youth and mm. um and and i must say you know the 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 experience i would have garnered from being the minister of portfolio responsibility for youth is that sort of experience that we're bringing here to engage diaspora youth so that they too can share in the great experience of jamaica and it can be yeah. a home you know and not just a place where they vacation for uh, a week or, or or four days or yeah. so that's very good now the big thing now is that everybody is saying get rid of king charles because you know queen elizabeth is gone now jamaica is moving towards a republic changing in the constitution um lots of things they are talking about that but you're here where is the government at now regarding jamaica moving on from the king and many people are saying no we don't want to leave the king but break it down for us sir Matt, so again um constitutional reform mm. is important to our administration mm. and we recognize that it is full time jamaica mm. completes its independence process by becoming like a republic yeah. um you know so when you look back at the teachings of marcus garvey you know marcus garvey's teachings about self-determination mm. when you listen to the music of bob marley you know up you know so so up again as, as jamaicans we recognize that we are a mighty nation yes. you know and that right to self-determination mm. you know can only be complete when the head of state is a Jamaican in Jamaica. So we are very serious about becoming a republic. Mm -hmm. We have started the consultation process. Now Jamaica is a thriving democracy and all views must contend. Yes. And so there's ongoing consultations throughout mm -hmm. the country. Yes. We even have members of the diaspora who logged in online as mm -hmm. well, who came in online to some of the consultation process because again, it's a sort of hybrid in person yes. and Zoom as well. Um, you know, so the process is ongoing and um, you know, we look forward to the input from members of the diaspora. Yes. The youth are also engaged so a big part of the consultations we have a youth member yes. who's on the constitutional reform committee mm. as well because we want the young people involved because constitutional mm. changes are also important to them because mm. jamaica well it's, it's their present yes. and also their future so we are going right ahead um, with the recognition that as a people as yes. a race you know we have to fulfill that right that destiny so many of our ancestors would have fought and yes. died to break the backs mm. of the enslavement mm. of our people to break the back of colonialism you know and recognizing that it is now time for yeah. that cycle yeah. to come full circle by becoming a republic yeah. and one of the things thank you for that one of the things that many people need to understand and which you clarify is that just removing the king as a head of state doesn't mean to say there's not an effective partnership still with the commonwealth no 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 yeah. i mean I, you know and we had those discussions yeah. earlier and so you know jamaica remains a part of the commonwealth yes. jamaica understands the role that we play as a leader sorry jamaica will remain a part of the commonwealth is that what you're saying yes jamaica After. jamaica will remain a part of the yeah. commonwealth so removing the british 
monarch from your head of state does not mean that you've removed yourself from the mm. Commonwealth. If you look at large republics like Nigeria yes. and India, I mean, they're still a part of the Commonwealth. Barbados, mm. Trinidad, still a part of the Commonwealth. Mm. So I just want persons to understand that, again, you know, historically, when you look at yeah. our laws, our constitutional system, mm. etc., or our entire political structure, it is based on yeah. a UK system that we've adopted. But certainly, you know, I mean, of course, there are, you know, the, the Jamaicans who live here in the UK, we want them to understand that, no, we're not breaking from the UK um, in terms of trade partners yes. and continued relations, good relations, bilateral yes. partnerships. Yeah. And certainly, you know, I mean, you'll still be, uh, you know, diaspora living yeah. in the United yeah. Kingdom. But um, it's something we have to do. Self-determination, true self-governance, yeah. forces of people. Yeah. Because there are many different factors to it, you know, the CCJ and different aspects. But importantly, what you said is that with uh, Malahu Fort leading the charge mm -hmm. and the consultation with everyone, all ideas content, well, we hope that being a democratic country, yes. that it will achieve somewhat that everyone will see it as the expanding or the expansion of the whole human race of Jamaica. No, but it, it is. <laughs> it, it really is. It's, full, it's fulfilling the destiny yeah. of our yeah. forefathers yeah. to have a completely free and independent yeah. nation state, yeah. you know, where every single young queen and young king in Jamaica yeah. can dream of one day becoming, yeah. you know, even the head of state yeah. of their great yeah. nation. It's important what you said, and to wrap up this now, the completion of the independence cycle. Yes. That's so important because many people sometimes say, are we independent or not? But I like what you said, and I leave this one, the completion of the independence cycle where a Jamaican will be our ultimate head, head of state. state. Yes. Good. Any last word? Any last? I mean, there's so much I could go on, but you know, and, and, uh, um, yes. you know, one, I, you know. So we spoke yes. earlier about you know, in terms of progress and growth and prosperity. Yes. yes. And I know healthcare is of particular concern. Yes. Um, to our diaspora here in the UK. Yes. I had the opportunity to meet with sector leaders from the, um, you know, across the fields of health and education. Yes. And I must say that, you know, the government again, you know, has, has, has embarked on a massive multi billion dollar mm. expansion of our hospitals, mm. you know, because again, we understand the importance of healthcare and yes. even in terms of mental well being. So if you take the Kingston Public Hospital, for example, the Kingston Public Hospital is undergoing a $300 million. Mm. you know reformation in terms of refurbishing rather yes. you know um the the Cornwall regional hospital again you know i mean hundreds of millions of dollars in refurbishing the Cornwall yeah. regional yeah. hospital um you know the university hospital of the west indies you know we're also looking at upgrading clinics yes. you know in jamaica so there there's a program also called adopt a clinic and i must say that three quarters of those clinics are adopted by and being sponsored by persons in, in the diaspora, in the diaspora. Yeah. so a big thanks again to our partners across yeah. the diaspora so so, so much is happening, even in terms mm. of education. Mm. How many persons in the diaspora are aware that the government has now passed a new policy mm. as it relates to the upskilling of our youth? So yeah. Heart Trust, NSTA, yeah. Yeah. Heart Trust has now embarked on a program where up to the level of an associate's degree, it's free because we want to empower our yeah. youth you know, so when you talk about social mm. intervention, you know, and getting them um, um, yeah. um, in terms of the skills for employment, etc., and the, re the reason for that low, yeah. um, for that low rate of unemployment, yes. it is because we're providing them with the tools and the skills. So whether it's carpentry, whether it's mason work, whether it's AI, whether it's any field in technology, mm. whether it's electrical engineering, you know, I mean, if it's a barber, I mean, um, hairdresser, computer skills, yes. digital skills, you know, you can register at a hard yes. program and it's free of cost yes. up to the level of an associate's degree because again we recognize that upskills you know providing yeah. the requisite tools for yeah. young people that's important we also have our social intervention program mm -hmm. which has seen some 40,000 young persons yeah. positively engaged in certification programs as well we've done um, parenting workshops you know with over 13,000 yes. parents you know, we've done, um, again, even, again, for them to better understand yes. their role as parents, etc., and all, um, you know, to prevent the terms of, you know, marginalized yeah. um, youth and, you know, um, yeah. families where persons complain about, well, you know, I mean, they don't have the requisite parental yes. skills and it's causing all sorts of yeah. maybe antisocial yeah. behaviors. So, so many mm. programs are in place to make Jamaica, in Key Point Vision 2030, yeah. the choice of place to live, raise families, mm. do business, invest, mm. and ultimately to return home for our that's for residents. You open up a, a kind of worm uh, with exciting moments. But I was going to say you got to go, but I want to touch on one thing, and I keep saying one thing, but 
apprenticeship apprenticeship is something big in the UK for young people mm -hmm. because it is recognizing that many are not going to university and uh, I, I like what you said also and I always say with the youths how can is there apprenticeship pro I know the heart is a bit similar there yes. but is it going to be widened mm -hmm. to a certain extent the apprenticeship program for young people mm -hmm. So again, you know, you know, there's so many big things yeah, happening yeah. in Jamaica. Yeah. So one of the things that we've done from the we're education, we're gonna wrap up. We're gonna wrap up soon. <laughs> one of the things we've done from the education sector is that yeah. we have now um, we have now made sixth form education a requirement for Jamaican youth. Yes. We recognize that so many young persons were leaving school at like let's say 15, 16, etc. Mm. You know, they didn't have the requisite skills. Mm -hmm. You know, they weren't quite 18 years old to get certain employment, etc. Yes. Within the formal sector because you're not 18 you're an adult yeah. um, you know and so we devised a program you know and I must say hats off to Minister Favour Williams and of course Prime Minister Andrew Holness yeah. you know for this particular program so you now have to do two years of mm. sixth form this is after you've completed in you know, um, grade 11 so yes. for grades 12 and 13 taking up to your 18 19 years old in school and it's a program you have different pathways yes. so you can have the standard pathway if you want to do let's say chemistry physics law you know yes. for, 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 for what used to be a levels in the diaspora yeah. you know but it's now um, c -sec. Yeah. or you can do any technical or vocational skills program mm. in a different pathways yes. wow. so we're giving them options to ensure that they have yeah. the requisite skills so that when they leave mm. school mm. they're getting an associates um mm. they're, they're, they're getting a diploma yes. or they're getting a skill certificate of varying yeah. sorts and varying degrees mm. so that when you leave school at 18 19 you can enter okay. the workforce with relevant skills yes. certificates so that's a new form of an apprenticeship yeah. program that's yeah. happening in jamaica yeah. so listen big things are going on in jamaica <laughs> all right no man about it try selling a propaganda so not now go on our things pop down yeah. jamaica is open yeah. for business and the best example of that is that if you look at jamaica as a as, as a company yes the books are balancing the economy yes. is doing so well that the books are balancing so when you speak about the spark program yes you know we're spending 40 billion dollars mm. to i mean you know saint thomas roads and highways mm. across the country you know and this 40 billion dollars it's all jamaican yes. we're not borrowing from anybody again for the first in a long time yes. simply because the economy is doing so good so when you hear of us doing these massive compensation packages you know i mean mm. we're paying our doctors more we just provided 2000 mm. permanent mm. posts for doctors in Jamaica. Yes, you yes. know, I mean, social workers have gotten in excess of 100% increase in salaries. The mm -hmm. principal of a small primary school, yeah. you know, I mean, who used to get, let's say, um, $2.2 .2 million, is now getting between seven and eight mm -hmm. million dollars. Yes. You know, it's a massive <coughs> salary increase yeah. across the board. So I just say yeah. all of these things, yeah. to said, I mean, we could speak about Jamaica and the growth and prosperity mm -hmm. for another hour, Silborn. Yes. And I know that, but you know, but it's just for our yeah. members in the diaspora yes. to have this information. Yes. I'm excited. Yes. I'm completely excited yeah. about the growth and development yeah. prosperity to Jamaica. And again, I'm very proud yeah. to be a part of this Andrew Holness administration mm -hmm. because we care about the yeah. people of Jamaica. The programs yeah. are in place. Stay far from the propaganda machine mm -hmm. because, you know, I mean, people will have their own objectives. But yeah. things are going on Jamaica. Big things are going on Jamaica. Blessings yeah. and guidance to all of you. And thank you so yeah. much for having me. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, what we are seeing and what, uh, what we're actually seeing is understanding and breaking down all the different views and noises around and my job is to bring some clarity to everything and hence minister is here and you can also find it out for yourself listen sir thank you so much blessed love my brother Safe thanks for having to me thank you so straight much straight out of where you come from again i'm from kingston straight out, yeah. straight from, out of a, kingston. from a community called an inner city community called um grand spain grand spain yeah, yeah. Okay. a developing community yes and enough things are going on grand spain and of course i have to shout out listen we have people from portmore my east central family right here in um in, in the uk the yes UK, yeah. you know you have andrine lewis who is doing break barriers it's yes. it's a home healthcare program yes, yes. her brother omar lewis is here as well i have to big them up yes. and of course back home in jamaica my east central family no flop, big up on herself. MP soon yeah. come home and get them to get get them to have the opportunity to vote soon <laughs> from the diaspora. We won't touch that. <laughs> <That's a long laughs> Take care, sir. Thank you. Peace out. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. And I'm um, with a uh, special um, edition from the Jamaica Diaspora UK Conference with um, our Minister Honorable Alando Terrellong. MP State Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade with special responsibility for us, the diaspora. He's got responsibility for me. Can you imagine? I'm special.
Thank you. I was on The Silver and Show. Remember to like and subscribe. One love from Jamaica.